What is going on, beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I am your favorite narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, aka Mr. Mental Illness himself, on from TikTok and Instagram and all the other good sites and whatnot. If this is your first time tuning in, I am a diagnosed narcissist. I am a self-aware narcissist, and this is my cross to bear. This is my platform to spread awareness from the other side of the narcissistic abuse, narcissist survivor um, dynamic. I'm not an empath. I am a narcissist. So everything you are, you're going to hear on this channel is going to be specifically from the per point of view, the perspective of a narcissist. Today's... Um, episode podcast whatnot is going to be about narcissists and their emotions in my own personal story of how i went over 10 years without crying <clears throat> one of the main questions that i get on tiktok instagram or any like any of my platforms is can narcissists feel emotions can narcissists be sad can do narcissists cry all this other good stuff you know that's one of the main questions that i get so like yeah i get it so much it is it's, <laughs> it's kind of insane how many times I, I get asked this question um and the answer is going to be yes like me personally like me being a i guess a regular normal run-of-the-mill narcissist i'm going to i can experience emotions i can experience you know fear uh, doubt, regret, shame, all that other stuff, you know, happiness, love. I can experience all that stuff. I'm just very, very protected about it. I'm just, I'm just very protective of my emotions. I am, I don't want to allow people to be able to hurt me. So if you can, if you can play on my emotions, you can hurt me. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and when I'm like, when I'm feeling too sad and stuff like that, it's why, it's why they can get me sad. They can control me. That's what I feel. I mean, that's a point blank period how I feel. If you can make me sad, you can somehow, way, shape, or form, control me. And I don't. I, I, you know, I really, really don't like that. One of the the main the main emotions that I feel though is anger. Anger is easy to express. Anger, anger, yelling, screaming. It's like passion is rage. Like people, when you I'm yelling and when I'm screaming, people are listening to me. People hear me. I'm in control of the situation normally. You know what I mean? Even though I seem like I'm out of control with the screaming, yelling, calling names, all that other craziness, I'm in control of the situation. I'm in control of everybody around me because everybody typically gets quiet or we or we are fighting. If you're not quiet, we're going back and forth. Um, <clears throat> but the other emotions like sadness and regret and crying and all that other stuff, like I, uh, I can experience them, but it's like I don't like them. So I try to protect myself against those emotions at all costs because I feel like I'm not... Showing, let me preface this, y'all. Showing emotions does not make you a weak person. But in my brain, how my brain is shaped and how my brain has been developed and, and formed over the last, you know, 35 years of my life, um, emotions, like, they cloud situations. They cloud judgments and things like that. So I'm more logic-based than anything. So let's get into this story of how I went 10 years without crying. And it might, it might can open some avenues. It might can open some, like, answer some questions about your own... Um, narcissist in your life and things like that how or why they don't cry and maybe the trauma that they experienced to make them who they are right now so maybe this this like this uh video and things like that this podcast will open up um that possibility of you like giving you some perspective on like your current relationship your current narcissist you know um your ex narcissist a lot of times <laughs> um so i'm 35 years old <clears throat> like i said i went from I know the time table, I don't actually know the very time period because it's crazy because it, there's so many it's, so, it's two defining events from when I cried. So the last time I cried, the last time I boohoo cried, shed tears, um, emotional was February uh, 6th, 1999. 1999. So not even like the turn of the century, y'all. 1999 was the last time um, I had cried, and. I went to October, I can't think of the exact date. I went to October, early October 2016. And that's when I shared my next tears. And it's about, it's, both of these situations are centered around the same person. Um, my aunt, who is tattooed on my chest, like my second mom. I love my aunt, I miss my aunt, you know. So she passed away in 1999, on February 6, 1999. And at her funeral, I was boo-hoo crying. You know what I mean? I love my aunt. I, I cared about my aunt. It was like my person. That's my person in my life. You know what I mean? So I missed her so much. And I remember just boo-hoo crying in a, over in the family section at the, uh, at the funeral. And <clears throat> I remember them asking, this, do the family members want to see, um, her name is Maxine. The family members want to see Maxine. I'm closing my eyes, y'all, if y'all watching on YouTube, so I can get into character. <laughs> 
uh, not into character, but deep into my in, deeper into my memory, so I can remember it correctly. So I remember them saying like, "Do the, the, the family members want to see um, the deceased, Miss Maxine Hammock, one, one last time before we close the casket?" And I remember like, "Get up!" I said, "I said to myself, like, get up, Demar, get up, get up, please get up, go see your aunt one last time. Like you need to see, you need this, you need it." And I was so overwhelmed with crying, and like, I couldn't. I was just so sad that I literally could not. Like I was literally so sad that I, I, I was so overwhelmed with crying and tears and sadness that I literally could not get up. I literally could not factor the energy to get up, the, the, the power to get up out of my seat to go see my aunt one last time. And when I finally, you know, I, I was crying so my eyes were closed. I wiped my eyes. When I finally opened my eyes and took a deep breath and wanted to do it, they had already closed the casket. So I was hurting. That, that was like pain. There was so much pain and suffering in that moment. And I became, I went, I went straight from sadness straight into anger and regret and rage. So from that point forward, I told myself, I think I told my, my I think I told my subconscious mind that crying is weakness. Crying and showing emotions will hold you back from things that you really want in life. So if you need, if you feel the need to cry, you feel the need to show emotions, you need to stuff this down. This, this, you need to stuff it deep down, and you need to get over it immediately, or it's going to hold you back like it did right now. You know the regret that you're feeling right now. So yeah, I'm telling myself this um, in my brain. So you, you see the regret that you're feeling right now. You don't ever want to experience this again. So I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 13 year old boy at this time, y'all. I'm 13 years old. <laughs> so telling myself this at my aunt's funeral. So I'm like, okay, okay, maybe I can get over it. You know, maybe I can do this. Um, and from that point forward, you know, I just did not cry. I've had kids born between now and then. I had, you know, I've had two children born between the. The two times I cried, I have two kids born, I got married, I had so many moments where I guess normal people would show emotion and cry. I just didn't. I just like, you close your eyes. Yeah, I look, I keep my I even keep my eyes open while I'm kissing, y'all. Like, I'm so afraid to show emotion and miss moments that like I'll keep my eyes open while I'm kissing, just so I can like if, this, if I kiss this person, if I kiss my wife, if I kiss kiss this girl or whatever right here, is she going to, you know, I need to see how she feels. I need to see how her body language reacts when I'm kissing, when we're kissing and stuff like that, so she won't leave me. Like, maybe I can kiss better. Like, if I keep my eyes open, I can uh, see how she reacts and let it'll let me know that I'm kissing correctly so she won't leave me. You know, if I close my eyes and, like, enjoy it, <laughs> I might miss out on a moment, and then I might miss something. I might miss a body, some body language that will help me, you know I mean, further on get this, get this person, you know what I mean? So I'll just, like, make sure I just keep my eyes open this entire time. Um, so, so from that point forward, like from 1999 to, um, like I said, from February 6, 1999 until early October 2016, I did not cry at all. You know, I, I just, I just couldn't. I told myself that like, if I cried, if I showed emotion, I was weak and I was weak and I was going to miss out on the moments of life if I closed my eyes and cried. So this is, sorry, it just got to the point where it was just like, just craziness to me. And my wife started noticing that we we got married in what 2015, so she noticed like, she, you know, I guess you know women want to see the husband crying when they walk down the aisle. Nah, you're not gonna get that from me. Sorry, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not funny, but like, you're not gonna get that from me. You, you know, I'm like I'm not gonna cry. I felt it like when I first saw her walking down the aisle, I felt it. I was like, damn, she's gorgeous. Like, yay, but don't cry. If you cry, you're gonna miss a moment. You're gonna miss, you know, you're gonna miss some emotion on her face. She's crying. So I'm like, okay, do not cry. Like, if I cry while my wife is walking down the aisle, I'm going to miss out on a moment of life. So I I felt the emotions bubbling up. I felt that deep feeling of sadness and happiness at the same time bubbling up, bubbling up in my stomach. And I just pushed it away. And instead of crying when she was walking down the aisle, we made eye contact. I just smiled. I gave my little sly smile, what, what people would call a smirk, you know what I mean? And I don't know if that affected her. I need to ask her, you know, but I don't I don't think it did. But we'll see. Of course, I don't think it did. I'm a narcissist, but... Um, so I didn't cry my wedding, didn't cry when my kids were born, didn't cry like <clears throat> I've had other family members. Like my, my grandma passed away, you know. Um, <laughs> I didn't cry when I found out about that. I just like, you know, I just I feel like crying would give you access to who I really am and allow you to hurt me. So I'm like, I'm not going to cry. Nope. I'm not going to show any sadness. I'm not going to show any regret. So like when the narcissist is screaming at you and, you know, and they're not showing any kind of emotion. If they're not a sociopath, if they're a regular narcissist like me, they're just trying to hold back from hurting themselves. You know, like, I'm hurting you. I'm hurting myself, too, by doing this. But, like, you, know, I don't want you to know. I need to get my point across. If I cry, my point won't get across. So, nope, I'm not going to do this. So, <clears throat> February 6, 1999 was the last time I cried. Um, 
And then my one of my good friends, his son passed away in 2016, October. Um, one of my good friend's son said that he had passed away. And this is all this is pre-therapy. I didn't go to therapy to 2017. So my son, my, 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 one of my friend's sons had like passed away. I uh, still don't know how. I think it was SIDS or whatever. Um, and we went to his funeral. Um, at his funeral, like he just so happened to be buried in the same cemetery that my aunt was buried in. And be like y'all, nobody, nobody, literally nobody in my family had went to see my aunt from 19, 1999 till this point where I'm at right now. Nobody. So there's no gravestone, there's no grave marker, there's nothing there to mark her grave. So after my after my friend's son's funeral, I was like, I'm in the cemetery. Let me go see my aunt Maxine while I'm here. You know, I haven't seen her. I want to know. I've always, I, I've, I always think this, y'all. Like I want to know if my aunt Mac is proud of me. I always ask myself that. Like. You at the cemetery now. Let's go ask her right now. Let's go ask her if she's proud of you right now. So I go, you know, we go over to the, um, I call the people. I don't know where her grave is. It's been, two, what, 11, it's been one. It's been 17 years since anybody has been there. So I'm like, nobody knows what the, the grave marker is. So I call them. They tell me the, the proximity. They give me, like, the the longitude and latitude, latitude of it, of course. They're like, C-17. I'm like, okay. I found plot C-17. I found the general area. So, and it's all overgrown, y'all. So, I'm in my emotions again. I'm fucking furious. I'm, I'm freaking furious now, you know, because nobody has been out there. Like, she was a matriarch of our family, and, like, nobody had been over there to, you know, nobody, nobody had been to see her in 17 years. Like, she had been forgotten. And I remember, like, I don't want to be forgotten like this. In that moment, I was like, nobody's going to forget me. I'm going to make my mark on the world, and people are going to come. You know, it's a narcissist in me. I'm going to make my mark on the world, and people are going to come visit my grave, you know. Like uh, the movie Coco, like I want to be on somebody's ofrenda so I can come back in the afterlife. <laughs> Put me on the ofrenda. Um, but I remember, like, like I got, I said like, I have to dig up her. I have to dig up her marker, you know. So I got the the prox the approximate space, and I just started digging with my hands on my hands and knees in like a black black slacks black shirt. It's a funeral. I'm at a, I just left a funeral. I'm on my hands and knees digging, y'all. Just digging, clawing, looking for her, looking for her marker. I'm out there 20 minutes by myself, sweating, digging, dirty as hell now. And I finally hit something, y'all. Hit something like, I was like, oh god, I found it. I think I found it. I think I found it. I think I found it. And I started uncovering it, and it just so happened, two of my friends, like one of my little brother and my cousin, had rolled up on me, and they're like, what are you doing out here? I'm, like, I'm looking at my aunt's grave. I had to find it. And then, um, I um. I uncovered what I thought was her grave. It was somebody else's marker, y'all. I dug 20 minutes out there in the dirt, hands, knees, dirt, fingers, dirty as hell, and uncovered somebody else's marker. And I was just overwhelmed. I was raging. I started screaming in the cemetery. I was just, I was just yelling, screaming, mad as hell. I was like, nothing ever works out for me. Nothing. Nothing works out for me. I'm in the cemetery screaming because I, you know, I found somebody else's grave when I was looking for my aunt Max's grave. I'm like, I can't find her grave. Nothing, nothing works out. They was like, man, just try again. So I'm, I, uh, I go, to, I go, uh, I get the approximate position. So I go to the right a little bit more. I started digging, clawing. I'm like, I need something to dig with. My homeboy, my friend, runs, grabs like the little, um, the crowbar, or whatever. Did you change tires? What well, I forgot what it's called. Um, he gives that to me. I started digging, digging, digging. Hit something else, y'all. So I dig it up, hands and knees. I like, look, take the bar, take the bar. I'm talking clawing, hands and knees, y'all. Peel it back, I peel it back, and then it's like, you know, it's my, it's my aunt's. You know, it's I pull back hands and knees. This is my aunt's grave mark. I saw her name pop up, and it was just like I was just, I found it. I succeeded. I was just like, yes, and I just started busting out crying, y'all. Literally boo hoo crying, boo hoo, boo hoo crying, just like. 17 years of tears had been let out just because I just knew I got to see her like it's, it was like I got to see her one last I got to see her I didn't get to see her when I was a little a little cowardly ass little emotional cowardly boy in my brain um crying couldn't muster the power to get up her but I could muster the power as a 30 some like 30 year old man I could muster the power and the energy to come dig her up I was 31 um I dug her up I could, and, and I cried, and so it was like all those tears and stuff that like came out of me right then and there, and it just felt so good. I was cathartic. I was like, I can't believe I went this long without crying. I was embarrassed. I was crying for my little brother, I mean, one of my little brothers and my cousin, my little homeboy. Um, I'm out there crying in front of them. No shame. I was like, you know what? I'm here. They here. Screw it, you know? And I just remember, it felt like I was getting an exorcism. I was like, oh, you know? But... <laughs> 
it all worked out, you know. Everything worked out. I dug her up, and now I, every time I go to Reedsville or whatever, go to the cemetery, I make sure I uncover her grave. And just so recently, y'all, I bought her a gravestone. I took my little Wizio money, the money I get from doing um, helping people with narcissistic abuse, her own Wizio, which is, which is in my link tree. Um, I took that money and bought her like a little grave marker, so I won't have to dig. I won't have to dig it up anymore. And my mama told me the other day, she's like, "Your Aunt Mac will be proud of you." So I'm, I'm on the right path, y'all. I'm on the right path with this emotional stuff. I'm not going to get emotional. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. I'm not going to get emotional, y'all. I know y'all waiting for me to cry. Then you want me to cry, didn't you? No, there's no crying here. Um, but that could be a reason why narcissists don't show emotions because, like, me personally, I went 17 years without crying because the last time I did, when I when I was 13 years old and crying, I couldn't I couldn't muster the energy up to go see my to get up at my aunt's funeral and go see her one last time. So I told myself I will never be in this position again. I will never cry and let emotions take over my life to the point where I miss out on something that I really 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 want to do. Because I can't express myself when I'm emotional. I can't think logically when I'm emotional. I can't do anything when I'm emotional. So when I was 13 years old, was I 13? I was 13 years old. I made a vow to myself to not cry again and let, let emotions take over my life and stop me from doing what I really wanted to do. And that your narcissist could have went through something similar. Could have went through some kind of trauma to show them why they to to protect themselves emotionally. Like don't show emotions because in the, mo in the moment in the moment you show emotions, you get hurt. In the moment you show emotions, you get betrayed. In the moment you show emotions, you don't have enough energy to do what you wanted to do. And that's what happened to me. And that's what happened to me when I was 13 years old. In the moment that I showed some emotion, some passion, some compassion, at, as a 13-year-old at a funeral, I could not muster the strength and energy to get up and go see my aunt one last time. It took me 17 years to go to muster up the energy and the strength to go see her again and dig her grave up again. And I will never let, like, and I'm still on that emotional kick now. It's still, like, adult, I'm still protective against my emotions. I don't let people in because you, if I let you in emotionally, you can hurt me. If a, if, you, if a narcissist lets you in emotionally, you can hurt them. And a narcissist likes to be in control of everything. We like to be, we like to control every, literally everything. We like to control the, my emotions, your emotions. We like to control everything around us. So it's just a power trip, y'all. Emotions are just a power trip for a narcissist. Like I'm protect my, I'm very, very protective over my emotions. And I'm, I know, I know this has went on for a while, y'all. I, I got passionate with this episode. <laughs> I just got passionate because you know it could explain a lot of things in your life. Or if you're a narcissist listening to this, it could explain a lot of things in your life as well. Like why are you not emotional? What are you, what are you guarding yourself against? Like as a narcissist, what are you? This is to the narcissist right here. If you're listening to this. What are you guarding yourself against? Why can't why can't we express emotions correctly? What kind of trauma did we go through? We have to process the trauma to be able to move forward. We have to process. We have to acknowledge it. We have to. You don't have to agree with it. You have to acknowledge that it happened. You were young when it happened. You couldn't control what what, what happened. You can you can control the circumstances. We are adults now. We can control it better. We can we can manage it better. We can manifest our own destinies better right now than we could have ever done before. This is to the narcissist. If you can, you can, we can man up. We can warm it up. We can take control of our lives right now, as an emo and we can experience emotions just like everybody else. We can do what we need to do. We can experience. We can have power over everybody else and be emotional. We can do that. That's the challenge to the narcissist. The people listen to this. I know you. I know you listen to this stuff. I know, I know there's some self-aware narcissists out here to listen to. They think you're better than me. They think you're better than Mr. Mr. Hilda. They think you're better than Lee Hammock. Prove it. Be emotional. Start a, start, a, start a TikTok. Let's go. I'm here. <laughs> but, yeah, so <laughs> I got to cut this thing to the end, y'all. I mean, this is my longest video. I didn't mean for it to be 18, 19, 20 minutes. Goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> thank y'all for tuning in. And, like I said, if you want to find me, I'm on TikTok at Mental Illness, uh, Instagram, Mental underscore Illness. And I'm also uh, on Wizio, W I S I O. For personal videos and stuff like that i'm starting my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions here soon too about to get my life coaching certification so be on the lookout for that as well and i'm ready y'all like i said life is coming we're coming and you know thank y'all so much for tuning in i'm really really truly appreciative appreciative of y'all and if you uh, if you watch the tv show the doctors your favorite narcissist me 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 will be on the doctors cbs um i'm filming march 11th i'll be on tv um talking mental health uh, in April sometimes. But thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all so much, so unbelievably much. I'm very appreciative.